I have to now unwrap my bottle. You know how long that took me? You do have to unwrap your bottle, Casey, because we are actually live, man. Okay, so for those who are joining us, thank you so much. I apologize for the delay. Uh, Facebook was giving us a little run around, but my name is Josh, and I'm joined by Casey and Shasta. And today we are sharing, uh, we were supposed to share three beautiful ways to wrap and gift wine. But I will say that my colleagues did a beautiful job of over preparing and we definitely will have a I don't know almost a dozen different ways that you can gift wine this holiday season um so real quick my name is Josh I'm the marketing manager here at JLOR and I'm joined next to me is Shasta our graphic designer and Casey who's our wine club director uh thank you guys so much for joining me how are you guys doing tonight great happy to be here thanks Josh yeah really excited well, again, I know that we uh, talked a lot about wrapping, and I guess I have some cheese in front of you, and you have all the art <laughs> stuff here. But before we dive too much into it, I feel like no wrapping party, especially a wine gift wrapping party, can get started without something in the glass. Um, so it seems like we all have red. Casey, what's in your glass real quick? I have a library wine. So it's our 2014 J. Lore Hilltop Cabernet Sauvignon um, that I am enjoying tonight. So it's something I've kind of stashed away and excited to drink. Oh, you pulled something out special. And that's funny because actually Shasta also chose the Hilltop, uh, but it's our current vintage. Shasta, why did you choose Hilltop as well? I chose Hilltop because this is absolutely my favorite wine to give as a gift. I think it's just a, it's an easy one to choose because you know it's always going to be well enjoyed and it's one of my personal favorites. Yeah, I, I, I will say I also do tend to lean towards gifting our J. Lord Hilltop Cabernet Sauvignon, but I also really also enjoy giving the Pure Paso proprietary red blend. Um, and I'll dive a little bit more into kind of how I like to get that later, which could be a little bit easier than what uh, the ladies will share today. But before we dive into uh, some of their DIY wrapping strategies, I want to give a big thanks to um, our partner over at Reserve Bar. For those who don't know what Reserve Bar is, and if you have your phone or computer handy, you can uh, open up a new browser, type in reservebar.com. And Reserve Bar is a premium uh, gifting and e-commerce shop. And so what you do is go into Reserve Bar, of course, search J. Lohr, so you can get the top tier of our portfolio. Uh, they wrap them and present them in the most beautiful ways. You can also even get custom engraving on the bottles, which really helps personalize the gift. And so if you're looking for a very high-end gift for that special someone or for a client, maybe definitely check out Reserve Bar. More on them later. Uh, but for now, I know that you guys also want to check out how you can wrap these beautifully yourself. So which one of you two would like to start? I have, okay. <laughs> I have a great, simple, easy one involving the Pure Paso, which Josh mentioned earlier. It's kind of funny. I think all three of us are in a very, um, we think we think alike. We enjoy the Hilltop and the Pure Paso. Really great, um, really great wines to gift. And they're such crowd favorites. So the Pure Paso, beautiful screen printed bottle. So already looks like a great gift. The red too. I, I dressed to match it. Um, but my super easy way, and Josh, I did this for you. This It's foolproof. I, you can do it. So I just bought some holiday wreaths from the craft store. They came in a set of three. Um, they even came with some twine tied around. So voila, there's your you gift. What? That is something that, and, and if you're gifting to either a big family or to lots of friends, wrapping takes a lot of time. And I don't know how the patient. So I like that first way. For those who are watching, if that's your go-to way, some kind of ornamental decoration, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Again, if you're jumping in, we're sharing different ways to wrap and gift wine. And I don't think you can beat the ease of that one. Uh, Ashasta, what do you think? That one's pretty good. I don't think I can beat that in quickness and uh, ease there, but I have a good way. And I think you can give it a try too. Let me give it a shot. And then you can uh, jump in. Let's see if you can this. Okay. This is a reusable wrapping cloth. And so I'm going to take a bottle of our- Wait, wait, wait. So hold on. If she's going to test me on this later. So you folded it in half. I just <laughs> So this is a napkin? It's a, yeah, it's basically a napkin or it's a reusable wrapping cloth. So it's, okay. it's nice because it's a little stretchy. Uh -huh. um, so I'm folding it in a triangle shape here. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to lay my nice bottle of Arroyo Vista Chardonnay here. Another great one to give. 
and receive. Um, gonna wrap it up here like this. I'll even pop the top out there. I'm gonna grab each of these triangle sides here and I'm just gonna tie a nice big knot right here in the front of it. Little origami, I can do this. A little origami looking, but you know what? It pops right together, just a double knot there to secure it nicely. And what do you know? Voila, we're looking pretty sharp. And I like it. Oh. Okay, see that one. Okay, I, I think I could do that one. Hold on, let's see how fast I can do this. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is, it, they're gonna try and pick on me. I was supposed to just eat the cheese <laughs> and moderate the comments here that were coming in. <laughs> Uh, but Shasta wanted to challenge me during in our pre-show, so. Okay, I have my like timer it. started, Josh, go. Oh no, okay, so this is, <laughs> wait, we're starting halfway, right? That yeah. was it? And yeah. then she did like, can it, let's see if everyone else can see if I do this right. So you put this inside here, you tuck it all the way down to the bottom. Well, you know what I like about this one is uh, I, you know, especially being in marketing, always appreciate a nice kitchen towel. And I know that those always end up getting dingy real fast. And I think my bow is not as nice as yours, Shasta. But, you know, TV magic. I think you got it. I don't know. Is that close enough? Is that pretty good? It looks great. Oh, here. It looks like a swaddled newborn, Josh. Look at that. <laughs> did I do good? Let me know if I did good. This is surprisingly <laughs> harder to swaddle than a new board, I guess. <laughs> and I do with my eyes closed. Look, and look at this. You can add a little garnish to it. Here's some eucalyptus leaves. There and you now go. you have yourself a uh, Pinterest worthy <laughs> gift. I think you actually wrapped it better than I did, Josh. Oh, she's just saying that because, you know, she has to because we're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. so before we, get to, before we get into the next one, I got a question for you guys. Uh, in the spirit of gift giving, um, you know, part of wrapping is also important, but just also thinking about how to gift wine, I think, is, is could be difficult sometimes. Uh, so you guys mentioned that you guys like to gift our J. Laura Hilltop Cabernet, um, but how much should you spend on a bottle of wine as a gift? Casey, what are your thoughts? Price is a hard thing. I'm not, I don't necessarily want to tell anybody what they should and shouldn't spend. I think that if you want to be very successful at gift giving in general, something with meaning is really important. So either that means that, you know, you know, they love red blends, which are pure Paso fits into that. So you're gifting them something new. Um, for me, pure Paso is a great option um, it retails for around $27 a bottle. And I think that that is a really nice gifting price point, um, depending on how much wine I'm giving and things like that. So I don't think there's any perfect answer, um, but we all know we have friends who would be just as happy with a, um, a $15 bottle or ones who would like a more expensive wine. So I think that as long as, you know, it's personal and means something, um, it's going to be successful. I like that. Jess, what do you think? I agree. I don't know. I think there's a no, uh, no wrong way to go with wine. Wine's fun. It's a, such a good gift. You know, people, they, if it's not white wine might not be their favorite or maybe it is, but there's always someone else that they know that might love that bottle of wine too. It's a safe gift. And if you love it, then hopefully they'll open it with you. <laughs> yeah. And I think, especially if they're just getting into wine or whether they're wine connoisseurs, there's always a bottle or a varietal or something that you can give someone that maybe they haven't tried before or takes them back to a certain memory that maybe you guys have had together, which makes that sentimental play oh, really easy. That's a good one. Um, so, okay, I like it. Um, any, what's the next wrapping for us? What do you guys got? Well, on the sentimental, we could, you know, this is another really simple one, Josh, um, if you're interested. Um, if you know someone really likes to bake, adding, you know, tying an ornament. Um, so I just have some twine. I'm going to cut it. You can tie the ornament on, uh, or not an ornament, I'm sorry, a cookie cutter. Um, so that would be a really easy option. Another like sentimental, someone really likes to cook, head to our website at jlore.com, pull one of our recipes that pair with like the Pure Paso. If you're going to give this, print it out 
um, hole punch it and you can attach the recipe on a twine. Like that would be super personal um, and easy to do. So I think that that would be great, but I have a more complicated one if we want, um, which is very similar to Shasta's. I am obsessed with cloth napkins. I do not use anything else but cloth napkins at my house. Um, and I think everyone should do it. It just makes, I think it makes everything just seem fancier than it is. So like when I'm eating <laughs> my microwavable macaroni and cheese um, with a cloth napkin. So I just bought these, um, the tags still on them. So I'll just snip that off. And similar to what Shasta did, I'm going to take out one napkin and I am going to, I'll move my wrapping paper and I'm just going to wrap a bottle in it. So I will wrap our um, 2018 J-Lore Estate 7 Oaks Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm going to also sort of do a little fold at the bottom and kind of tuck the bottle into the fold on the side. So another okay, little bottle like, hold on. Hold on. Shasta, you want to try this with her to see if you can get this? I'm going to call you out on this one. Let's see if you know this. We'll, we'll, we'll unwrap this one. It's, it's so easy. Call. Shasta will get it. I mean, it's... I'm excited to try this. Got to learn new ways to wrap. It's, you watch it as that. it's almost the exact same as Shasta's. I promise it's not nothing super intense. And I'm just <laughs> going to roll it. So this one I'm going to roll. Okay. Oh, pretty. And then... So this doesn't tuck, but I'm going to use the ribbon that came with my um, napkins already because that's sustainable because we're going to reuse there. And I'm just going to tie a little um, bow on the back. My bows are, are not very pretty. I haven't perfected the bows. Um, bows are really hard to tie. Shasta so, does a, and I, I will say, we'll do that. I'll show you a, a nice, easy trick in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tie a little bow, but now I have three extra napkins that came on this like little hook. So I will take another piece of my handy dandy twine. I could also reuse some of this twine from my little reef if I needed to, if you didn't have twine at your house, but I was going to tie the napkins to the back of the bottle like this. Um, and this one for me is a good gift right now because um, I had a, a good amount of friends who bought homes and family who bought homes or moved in 2020, but mm -hmm. they couldn't have any sort of like housewarming. So now I'm attending, um, if I attend a holiday party, it's sort of like a holiday, hell or a holiday housewarming party combined for a year later. So it's kind of a bottle of wine plus some cloth napkins and you can't. So that is. Casey, fine. I love that. There's nothing, you know, I'm always, I always feel like a little hesitant to wrap something in a gift that is maybe just a single cloth napkin because, you know, as a recipient of that gift, what do you do with one cloth napkin? But if you have a yeah. whole set, that's, that's a great gift. Yeah. So simple. I think Josh, you can do it, right? I can, but I'm moving into the apartment next month, so you can bring that. And if you want to tie a recipe to that, uh, you can also attach the steak to the wine <laughs> bottle, and I'll gladly accept that. So I have a um, package steak, just slap it right on there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, ribeye preferred, but you know, some days I'll we'll take a, a nice New York strip, but uh, okay. So I like that one. Obviously, napkins, always a hitter. Um, Shasta, what do you have for us? Well, I have something along the similar theme of uh, just tissue paper, because that's something that a lot of us have, you know, just kind of hiding in the bottom of our wrapping boxes is to wrap with a simple tissue paper. Um, so I like to take, hold on, let me move my wine out of the way so I don't spill it. Oh, I actually can't drink it so far away. <laughs> the long arms, it'll work out. Wait, can you show them the after first, just so they can yes. see? Okay. So we're working toward this here. So it's Right. You know, it's a wrapped bottle here with a nice bow on it. Um, you know, the top's hiding in there. And it's a, it's a similar technique with that rolling. So I use two sheets just because I feel like it's less likely to rip if we use two sheets of tissue paper. Um, and so I'll use my bottle of shard. No, let's use this one. <laughs> let's go for another one. Let's go for the Fog's Reach, the 2019. 
Fog's Reach, J. Lore, Pinot Noir. Delicious. Mm. Another great one to receive as well as give. So we're going to, if you can see this here, I'm moving yeah. out of the way. Which that wine too will go with so many holiday dishes. So extra, like it's a great choice. Um, any sort of like mushroom or pasta that wine pairs really well too. So, so I've got my rectangular shape here and I'm going to point the wine top over here at the, uh, the top left corner. And I'm just going to bring up the bottom here. I'm going to bring it snug to the bottom. And I'm just going to bring the lower corner up. I'm going to pull it in and just start to slide it down a little bit. The hardest part about wrapping wine is that it's circular. <laughs> it's round. Those round ones are a little bit tricky. Should you, would you recommend taping it beforehand or does that ruin the like, aesthetic I, at I, the I end? I've never tried taping it. So we're just going to, we're going to be smart here. We're just going to roll it on there. So we're going to roll and fold. Okay. We're going to be a tricky. We're just going to roll and fold. There we go. So because it's round and it can roll, it's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to touch up those edges. I'm just going to roll as I go. Roll. Pull it in. And this one requires a little bit of tape because you, know, you can't tie it. So I'm just going to attach it with a little bit of scotch tape here on the back. Right there. A nice little addition there. Oh. And then, so now it's ready to go. And Josh was admiring my beautiful gold scissors. Okay, here. wait, hold on. Before <laughs> she cuts the ribbon. So we were prepping for this live, Casey. <laughs> These are the scissors that Shasta brought from home. Like, you know that she wraps presents. Here are the scissors that I have. Right, and here's what I pulled out. Rather than the office or at home, these are- Same ones, mine just are pink, Josh. <laughs> okay, do you see this? And so her, her gifting ability, I have such high hopes for the team gifts this year, you know? <laughs> So I always like to choose um, a long ribbon because I feel like if I cut a nice long ribbon, it'll get reused. If it's just a little piece of ribbon, it might just get thrown in the rubbish bin. So here is, uh, here's my ribbon technique that I showed Josh earlier, which is actually pretty, I think it's kind of a good one because the, getting those bows just right, uh, first really hard. A knot, <laughs> secure it in your place you and go right around the neck of the bottle. You know, try and make your end even as much as possible. And then I just do the double loop. So I've got two loops and tie in a knot. Ears, like you used to tie your shoes as a kid. Exactly. Is, uh... it's, the, it's the bunny ear technique of tying your shoes when you're just little and trying to figure it out. So you get the two, the two bunny ears, tie right. a knot. And see, I have these long bits here. I'm going to go ahead and pull those through so they're the length that I want them to be. You know, so they're not too long, hanging off the bottom there. So I've got one knot there, and I'm going to go ahead and tie another bunny ear. I'm going to just do the whole process one more time. See, I think one that was my core problem first already is that I always cut my ribbons too short, which then you can't do the extra ties to make them straight or symmetrical, or in this case. Oh, it's a little bit tricky that ribbons. <laughs> the ribbons are hard, but you know what? They don't have to be. You just cut them long enough, and then if it's not working out for you, just cut them off. Right. I'm not following my own technique. All right. So give yourself a bunny ear, tie it once, and then tie it again. Then you have a double bunny ear. It gives you a nice knot at the end. And you're looking pretty good there with a nice ribbon. And then you can just go ahead and snip those ends if it's looking a little too long. Casey, how does your sound, turn out? The sound of those scissors is solid. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun to use. Um, you know, and then you're just gonna, you can add a little name tag onto that as well if you wanna get fancy and give it to, you know, your favorite teacher or your favorite neighbor which i always like to give my neighbors wine i think it makes for good neighbors so or teachers teachers always love wine too <laughs> they need it and, well and also even if they don't drink there everyone can always bring it to their next function their next party or serve it at the next gathering so uh 
that's why it, wine, I think, is the easiest gift to still please everybody. Um, it's very useful. Talking about parties, Casey, just because I know you probably get this question a lot right now. So if I'm planning, say, a small gathering right now of, of 10 friends or, you know, 10 family members, how do you calculate how much wine should we be buying for that party? So I could, every, every situation is different, but the most standard rule that has never failed me is one bottle of wine per person. Um, that, to some people, that sounds like a lot of wine, 10 bottles. To other people, that's going to sound like not enough wine. Um, but what I found is I, it, it's never failed me that way. I've never run out of wine. And if it's something that you enjoy, having a little bit left over is good. Um, if you have 10 people, you're looking at 10 bottles. And if you're serving two different types of wine, one wine might run out and then you might be just left with some of the extra wine and that's okay. But again, I've never run out of wine when I've done one bottle per person. So, and I think that's the key um, to not run out. So <laughs> that's what I would suggest. Okay. What about you, Chess? Do you have any rules or guidelines or no? That would seem like a good rule. I mean, maybe if you know people or maybe you're serving a ribeye, maybe, you know, maybe up the red wine and, you know, or maybe if you're serving seafood, you up the white wine. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, one bottle per mm -hmm. person. And if you have a couple left over, that's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. And you just have a gift to give. See? Exactly. <laughs> Easy. Okay. The, the last party question I have for you is, okay, so now... If you don't want to host because hosting sometimes you got to set up you got to clean up all that stuff and that, that is you know you can't host everything all the time um as guests what do you guys have any general rules to follow or that you've heard of in terms of bringing something to the party and of course in this case it's always going to be wine for us i feel like uh do either of you have anything on that i always bring wine. Um, I'm sure just like you guys, when you work in wine, um, in your family and your friend groups, you are known as the wine friend. Um, so I always bring wine, um, as a gift and usually it is one bottle. I know if it's, you know, um, depending on the friend or the family, um, I might bring for family gatherings, I usually end up bringing a bit more wine. And that's because I just want to make sure that there is enough Jaylor wine to go around. And I can't, I can't guarantee what some other people potentially could be serving. So I want to make sure that I always have um, Jaylor there for when I want to drink it. But um, usually, you know, one to two bottles of wine, if you're bringing um, is a is a great option. Yeah, I did hear somewhere, maybe I could just be making this up completely. Uh, but if you're bringing it, if you're coming in as a guest, you can bring two bottles, one to open up to the, with, with the party to share, and then one that the host can then stash away and then enjoy at a later date when they can actually just settle down. Because I'm sure as all of you have hosted things. Right. Is it, do I open the bottle now? What is the expectation? If you bring two, then you don't have, you take that off the table. It's easy. You know, that you open one and you know that you put one on the wine rack. It's a, that's a great idea. I like that too. Cause I have also heard that like in proper etiquette, the host is actually not required to open the bottle of wine that you brought to them. Um, it's sort of something that we see happen all the time, but it's actually not a requirement because think if you were having that dinner party with 10 people and you, I'm hosting a dinner party for 10 people and I've coursed out every single meal and I've chosen the wines that's going to pair, I necessarily might not be opening another bottle that was brought um, to me. So um, when bringing wine as a hostess gift, you know, I necessarily probably wouldn't bring, oh, I've been saving this bottle in my cellar for eight years. I'm so excited to bring this tonight to drink at this party of 10 people because there is a chance it could not be opened. And that is, that's fine too. So the bringing two bottles is a nice option there. Oh, see, I didn't even think about that. So yeah, that's, thanks for teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, before we dive into maybe one last round of some, you know, holiday shenanigan questions, um, Casey, do you have another way to wrap wine? I do. So I have a wrapping paper method with 
a fan. So yes, there is a bottle of wine in here. Um, it will take a few minutes, so we'll kind of chat, but I'll walk um, you through all the basic processes that you need. So you start with wrapping paper. I already cut mine. I did find that this method works a little bit better with um, a Bordeaux bottle or the taller slender bottle, less so with um, the low shoulder, a little chunkier, um, but still beautiful bottle. Um, so um, we have um, the Jaylor Hilltop that I'm going to start with. So I cut my um, wrapping paper so it could just fit around the bottle. There's no gap. And this one does require tape. So I'm going to put it towards the bottom of my wrapping paper about an inch and a half, leaving a room. And I have, I'm going to pull off some pieces of tape now. I think. You're taping. Tape is, is hard, guys, to grab. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to tape the paper to the bottle so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to tape the paper to the paper. Um, That's good. So, and then you do a little fold. I don't know how I'm going to show this. I've never done it this way, but you're just going to fold it like you would a gift here on the bottom. So okay. just fold it in. Um, so it sort of lays flat and you can, it's the bottom of the bottle guys. So it's not gonna, um, everyone's not going to see it. I promise it doesn't need to be the prettiest thing you've ever seen. And I'm just going to, if I can grab a piece of tape, you know, that should have been like the fifth gifting hack is how to properly undo the roll of tape that actually hasn't been attached to the you know what i'm talking about the the tape saver i don't know what it's called i was doing that earlier it's supposed to be a pop-up tape thing and i lost the pop-up section so now i just have tape um okay so now i have this very long guy here so i'm gonna lay it down actually wait casey before you go on you have a finished product there is that what i'm assuming Yes. Just to give them a tease of the fanning origami that's going to take place. The okay. Fanning origami, there is a ribbon. The ribbon is highly recommended or you really need it. Um, so again, I wrap my bottle in the wrapping paper and now I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to kind of flatten it and I'm just going to start making a fan. So I'm going to fold in and then mm -hmm. I'm going to fold under that. Gotcha. And so you if you really time. want to, again, it's a round, wine is round, so I could roll it and turn it. Now I'm just going to keep doing this until we get to the bottom. So um, I can multitask. So if you know if there's any other questions we have, Josh, or uh, well, she has to ask me if I'm going to try and wrap this, and I think no. I think, <laughs> I think, I think this one. Uh, if if you end up getting this one, it's because I really like. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess how about the fun holiday question I have for you guys is, um, other than gifting wine, because I know that we will all be gifting wine. Do you have a, another wine related gift that you like to give, uh, or the wine connoisseur in your life, Shasta? uh i you asked me this question a little bit earlier as we were kind of warming up and i i think it's just a really nice wine opener for someone who loves wine i think that's a nice gift or you know if you really like that person maybe uh you know a wine saver think, okay yeah yeah no what about you uh casey what do you think um, well wine adjacent things are are always going to be i love the wine opener um another option is like a really cute um, cutting board or something. This one is marble in the state of California. And this is a great, you can use it to cut or you can make a cheese plate with it. So I think that's a really good option. This and a bottle of wine and some tea towels and a gift basket, bam, um, that would work really well. Um, Wrapped in a ribbon with the steak on top. <laughs> yeah, but I also, you know, 
I also like money as a gift. That's great too. So <laughs> <laughs> wine gift card. It's not wine, but it's wine related. There you go. Um, okay. So now as you see, I have my little fan here. It's kind of fallen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, you can cut a piece of ribbon, the length to go all the way around your bottle. I already cut it here and I'm just going to put it down, put my bottle on top of it. And I'm going to tie it in the back where this seam is from the paper. Cause this is the back. Okay. So, I've never seen the ribbon go on top like that before. That's so you put it over like this. Uh -huh. Okay. And now I'm just going to give it a little tie and I tied my rib or I, I cut my ribbon <laughs> too short. So learn from my mistake and listen to Shasta. Um, but I will make it work because we will not waste this beautiful ribbon. You're watching the comments. Is the ribbon long enough now? You can let us know. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to kind of, you know, I made I'll make a little choppy here. Uh-huh. And start pushing these pieces together. And then we need to take the two center pieces and tape them so that, that our fan stays. That looks pretty cool. And you can tell, you know, when you like get a beautifully wrapped gift and you're like, man, this person, and you know that it like wasn't done by the store and it like is very personally done like this, you know that this person not only, you know, thought about the gift that's inside, but then took the extra time, uh, like just to package it nicely. And you know that they were thinking about you while wrapping this. And now it's a beautiful presentation. I like that. Casey, that is beautiful. So there you go. So this is what it looks like with a little shorter bottle. You get a little bit of a bigger fan, but I'm a fan. <laughs> I just had to do that. That was just a, they set that one up too good. Are you, you know? my number one fan, Josh? <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Right. So you Shasta, ready? yeah, I got yeah, go ahead. I've got one for you to wrap. Uh oh. You ready? Oh. Challenge. Ready. I don't know what she's pulling. I have no idea what she's pulling out. I know. Fresh Josh. You gotta Josh. get ready. Oh, never mind. I know what's happening here. Yes. I got you. you okay. We're on the easiest ones. Gift bags are great. I actually don't know. Okay, you guys can teach me. Do you put do you wrap this in the gift wrapping paper and then put it inside? Or do you put do you put the bottle inside and then the wrapping paper on top? It depends on how time crunched I am. <laughs> if I am time crunched, I'll literally just stuff the paper on the top, but otherwise- um, Wrap it nicely. It's Shasta's tissue paper one that she already wrapped looks so beautiful. So that inside of a bag would look really wonderful too. Um, See, here's what I would do. <laughs> and then you're gonna say this is all wrong. <laughs> if I would put this just like this, and then inside, and then maybe I would throw another one on top, and I would just shove it inside, See? One, and, and then call it a day. See, and then if you would like this gifted, you can let us know. I will, we'll, we'll gift it to you. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll okay. take that, Josh. <laughs> I think you know most people it's it's what's inside that counts I guess on that one um but some last final ways to gift um I do have my favorite way to gift since they did such great ways is maybe cheating a little bit but I brought this to my family's last holiday party and it it, it was obviously a very popular well-received uh, thing to give. Uh, for those who don't know, these are the lower, large format bottles. Uh, this is a three liter bottle, which if this is 750 milliliters, that is four bottles of wine inside this called a double magnum. I had to look that up. Um, <laughs> and this one, one because Pure Paso, the packaging is already so beautiful. Uh, Shasta helped me tie this bow earlier. Uh, and then now I can just get this and everybody is happy. Um, at my family party. Uh, 
Casey, how, I mean, just because I know someone's going to ask, how can someone get a large format JLOR? Uh, so they're available locally through our wine centers. So in Paso Robles and San Jose, California. And if you'd like to email, um, you can either call one of the wine centers or email us at wines at jlor.com and I can assist you. Well, you now know how to get these. So if you want to get the large format, you can let us know, put in the comments, see if you get the large format and uh, we'll try and take care of you. Uh, and we that's do only have... if Josh doesn't buy them all. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know how I can get these to my family. Um, there is one last one. Um, and Shas says, use her bow technique. Um, and so we have gift packs that yeah, Casey's team. That. Unwrapping is the best part, almost as good as the sipping part. Um, so now that you know how to tie the bow on the gift packs, you can get you can order the gift packs for yourself and gift this to somebody. So Casey, can you tell us a little bit about look at that? Ooh, can I, see the straight lines here? Almost. Oh, looks beautiful. Yeah, watch this. We'll do this. Don't hit anything else. That's great. So that is one of our um, JLore gift packs that are available on our website at jlore.com. Uh, we have a few about uh, four or five, um, three bottle gift sets, and all of them come in the black box like that. Shipping is included in the price as well. So that's a nice feature. Um, and so it comes ready to ship. The bow was added by Shasta. So again, like Josh said, if you wanted to order one, have it shipped to you, you could wrap it up and gift to someone, put it under the tree. It would look really nice or it ships um, as well in um, a box. And then once you open it up, you re uh, see the black box with the wine inside. And so we have a, uh, many different options um, on our website at jlor.com. So, and I would suggest ordering, if you are looking for a gift that is going to be shipped, whether it is from us at JLore or anybody, um, wine or not, I would suggest ordering now. I recently did was doing some personal Christmas shopping and I started noticing some websites are already saying won't arrive until after Christmas. So um, our last day to order for the East Coast and the Midwest is um, December 15th and for California is the 20th. So you still have some time, but the early bird gets the worm. So I'd order as soon as possible all your Christmas gifts. <laughs> Perfect. And then the last plug that I will say, if you do, if you have that very extra special somebody or a client or, uh, you know, a boss that you want to impress, uh, go to reservebar.com and you can get custom engraved uh, bottles of uh, just uh, the best of our portfolio. Uh, you can shop through all the different gifts that are on there. And again, their packaging is amazing and it's a reserve bar. Um, but the last question I have before uh, we end and we wrap up for tonight. Oh man, see, <laughs> come on. This is all so good. Um, okay, let's just talk about holiday food like what are you guys looking forward to eating now that we've talked a lot about wine just leave us with the food thought and then we can all break for dinner uh shasta i absolutely love ginger cookies i've got a recipe it's amazing i cannot wait to make them it's my favorite oh see now i need to pull over the recipe and then we gotta throw <laughs> on the website so that you guys can all also try it for yourselves because now that you mentioned that that just and I, I'm expecting to try those for the team too, Shasta. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yes, I'll make them for everyone. Casey, I'll send you a box. Okay, I'd like a box set. I do love your cookies. <laughs> All right. Casey, what about you? Um, you know, I love a cheese and charcuterie platter around the holidays. Um, that's probably because you get multiple different types of cheeses. I love triple cream brie. I love um, baked brie. Um, so a lot of cheese and I am really into like, well, gosh, I can't mac and, I was going to say mac and cheese as well. Like I love uh, mac and cheese. I didn't, I didn't mean both of those to be cheesy. Um, as, as cheesy as Josh is with his fan and wrap it up. Um, but those are probably, you know, calories don't count during the holiday season. So that's my favorite. <laughs> 
I love it. And I guess I'm sure that you guys can already probably guess mine, which is I like to make the prime rib for my family. So um, I guess my family, if you guys are watching, uh, I'll make that this year again. Um, and that's, of course, always paired with a delicious cab. Um, so thank you both so much for sharing the fun DIYs, whether it be very intricate fanning techniques or the beautiful but simple ways, you know, the traditional ways to gift wine. Um, that bow tying technique of just making sure it's long enough to add the double bows will definitely be a staple in my gift wrapping strategies from now on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I hope that for those who are watching, whether you're watching it live or on the post play, I hope that you guys found something that inspires you to gift and to celebrate this holiday season. Uh, Shasta or Cassie, I mean, Ka Ka Casey, do you guys have any last closing thoughts for all of our friends at home? I just hope everyone has a great holiday. You know, it's nice to see things changing a little bit and get to be around each other a little bit more mm -hmm. and enjoy a glass of wine. Yeah. Cheers. I hope everyone has a lovely holiday and I'm really excited to spend some time with friends and family. So. All right, guys. Well, on that note, we will get Cheers. to maybe some more wrapping, a little more <laughs> sipping. Cheers, Casey and Tamarna Home. Cheers, guys. Hope you guys have a great Cheers. holiday season. Bye, everyone. Thanks.